close your eyes and try to be sensitive to the breath. The more sensitive you are and the better the breath feels, the more likely you will be to stay here. So think about how you would savor food, because you want to savor the breath in the same way. You open your awareness to the taste buds as much as you can, and you're completely receptive to what they bring in. Now the reason we are not receptive to these things is we found that there's going to be pain and something un un unpleasant, so we close out. So we have this tendency to close up our awareness of the breath energy in the body for that reason. But here you're breathing, you're still, the breath comes in. You can think of it coming in freely from any direction at all, whatever rate the body wants. And so open up your awareness in here to make it more sensitive. And the second way that you get more sensitive so that you can savor the breath is to develop your vocabulary about the possibilities of different kinds of breath energy. John Lee has a long catalog. He says it's not just the breath in and out. There are breath energies that spin around in place. There are breath energies that move back and forth in the body. There are breath energies that suffuse through the body. So ask yourself, can you sense any of those? Like professional tasters, they have to develop a very precise vocabulary for the different tastes. And having the vocabulary makes them see things that they wouldn't have picked up before. So in the same way, think about the different possibilities of what the breath energy in the body can do. And if you find a, a type of movement in the body that's not one of the ones that's listed, well, you can make up your own word for it. The important thing is that you get really sensitive to what's going on, and you're really sensitive to the variations. Because as you get more sensitive to the breath, then it allows you to become more sensitive to the parts of the mind that have been closed off as well. So try to savor your breath, become a connoisseur of the breath, in the same way that you would be a connoisseur of good food. The difference being that food, of course, is a pleasure of sensuality, whereas the pleasure of the breath is the pleasure of form, which is a higher level of pleasure. Your body as you feel it from within. And this doesn't have to depend on things outside being a certain way. Even with the noise in the background, it doesn't destroy your breath. It can be cold outside, it can be warm outside. All kinds of things can be happening outside. But your breath is still there, and you can open yourself up to this area of your awareness, wherever you are, under whatever the circumstances. And this way your breath becomes your friend, it becomes your support. It becomes your nourishment as you go through the day, because you're sensitive to it. So try to develop this quality of sensitivity, because it's from the sensitivity that your discernment is going to develop as well. Discernment isn't just a matter of memorizing the words that you read in the books or you hear in the Dharma talks. It's getting sensitive to subtle movements in the mind. So get sensitive to the breath, and that'll help you get more and more sensitive to the mind. When you're really sensitive to what's going on, then you can get the most out of it, because you can adjust things. You can sort out which breaths are useful, which ones are not, and then you take that same principle into the mind, which ways of thinking are skillful and which ones are not. And when you're coming from a sense of well-being, it's a lot easier to see these things and then to abandon what is unskillful. No matter how much you may have liked it before, when you see that this is going to lead you to a bad place, the fact that you're coming from a sense of well-being makes it a lot easier to say no, or to say yes to things that are difficult, but you know will give good results in the long run.